Hello, and welcome to this presentation. You will see how to clone a server or virtual machine using Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control with the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance. Cloning is typically performed by the self-service user whenever another instance of a fully configured server is needed. A clone is a copy of a server that includes all the software installed as well as any guest operating system customizations that have been made. When making a clone, you can duplicate or change the resource settings for CPU, memory, and storage. Because the clone operation copies the server's system disk, the IP address and hostname are also duplicated in the clone. These have to be changed before the server can be used. All resources needed to create the clone come from the allocated quota for the user managing the zone where the clone resides. We start this demonstration on the infrastructure self-service portal logged in as the sales self-service user 1. The portal home shows the last 10 requested servers, including the server that belongs to a Fusion middleware assembly. The server we want to clone belongs to that assembly. You can clone a server from this interface, but it's better, in some use cases, to clone from the server's display. So click on the server's icon on the left side of the screen to see the server's display. Click on the small triangle next to the assembly name to show the server on the list. We can be sure to select the server that belongs to this assembly. The server is currently running. It's a best practice to stop the server before initiating the clone operation with Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. Navigate through the Action menu and the Server option, then click Stop. When the Confirmation page appears, click Stop at the upper right corner. The list of servers returns with an informational message at the top. Click on the small triangle next to the assembly name to see the server status. It's still running. So, clear the confirmation message by clicking the small x in the upper right corner. Wait a few moments, then click the circular arrow to refresh the list display. Now, click on the small triangle next to the assembly name to see that the server has stopped. Navigate through the Action menu and the Server option, then click Clone. The clone server request sequence begins with the general screen. You can rename the request if you want, but we take the default. There are no other settings on this page, so click Next. The deployment configuration page appears. Here is where you can redefine some of the resources for the cloned server. Start by setting the number of servers to 2. In our example, we want two clones of the server in the Fusion Middleware WLS generic assembly for a temporary exercise with no specific duration. Enter the name prefix temp WLS generic. Make sure to add a space at the end of the name. Click the high availability checkbox. Click the small triangle next to the network label to make changes to the network interface. We don't need to change anything here. Click the small triangle next to the storage label to make changes to attach storage, and no changes are needed now. You can also use a predefined server size, or you can alter the memory and CPU count as you need. We keep the current settings and click Next. The schedule page appears. Although our clones are intended to be temporary, we will not change the expiration date from the default value, so click Next to review the request. On the review page, you can see links to the definitions of the two cloned servers. Note that Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control has appended 0 and 1 to the name prefix that was provided in the deployment configuration. Click on the temp WLS generic 0 link to see details. After review, click Cancel. Now click Finish to start the request job. An informational message appears at the top of the server's display. Click the small x in the upper right corner to dismiss the message. After waiting several minutes, refresh the display by clicking the circular arrow above and to the right of the server list. The two clone servers now appear on the list, and they are running. It is important to note that if you're cloning a server with a static IP address, that IP address is copied into the clone. The console window on the left shows the network configuration for the original server. The console window on the right shows the network configuration for the server temp WLS generic 0. You can see that the static IP address in the network configuration files is the same, 
so the IP address will have to be changed on the clone. This ends the presentation. Thank you for watching.